Welcome back everyone to Piney Plays the Beorning and the first thing we need to do is to deal with some loose ends because we need to deliver some chickens. How may I help you, friend? Ah, oh, chickens! Uh, thank you, Pine Claw. Uh, did you catch that good-for-nothing thief? Oh, yeah, I did that. Ah, uh, that is too bad. But it was indeed good for you to return our hens to us. Alright, and with that... With that done, we can head out and... Probably best not to go around trapsing around the fields. Because what we need to... Oh! I gotta go back to Lanier to get my reward. Well, I'll see you when I get to the next quest area. We are in Belfalus. The quest turn in for that chicken quest wasn't very impressive, so it's just as well that I decided just to do it off camera. Now, I've decided to also skip Tardent. Not much liking that particular quest chain, especially one of the quest givers there, who I would just really like to punch, and I don't feel like going through that all over again, so therefore, we are continuing with the epic storyline. And that will be to come up here and look over this place. Well, I'm at level 101 now, so should be able to handle it since it's level 199 or 100 quests here. Uh, hello there. Someone said that there weren't any elves in the area. If you are a friend, you are welcome to share my watch. I would be pleased to have your company, for men of Umbar have brought their ships to shore and threatened Ethelond. My people have not inhabited this refuge for a thousand years, but we bear enough affection for places once dear that we cannot allow the raiders to remain. If their goal is to plunder, they will be disappointed. The only relics that remain will be of historical value only. And valuable artifacts or jewels were taken long ago. There are others of my people nearby. If you can defeat some of the raiders throughout Ethelond, I will bring you to them. Return hither with any relics that you find, and I will be doubly pleased, for I do have an interest in curiosities for my people's history. So I need to explore some areas, collect some relics, and defeat some Corsairs. I suppose that can be done readily enough. And I will find plenty of Corsairs. These packs of four Corsairs in there, that's... I always try to give them a wide berth. They're always a real pain to try to get around. Right now, the Corsairs I need to worry about are these that are in this set of ruins here. And you'll see that they are all over the place. Now, I do have a certain fondness for this place because in my Gondor series, this is the area where I hit level cap level 100 back in these days. Obviously, that won't be the case here since I'm already past 100. But yeah, to always remember the first time you hit level cap and actually yeah, my first character hit level cap was here well, right after I thought was a beautiful time. I think the most wonderful time I think I ever had in hitting level cap because it's right after a very touching quest. And I'll we'll see if we could do that quest just at least. Yeah, I don't know if it's available to me because I've skipped a few things, but if it is, I'll probably do it anyway simply because. This is a little bit of a. Nostalgia, so to speak. Alright, let's 
see relics and but here this time level 101 instead of level 99 and going through this class I should have an easier time with it especially therefore little thing I should remember on occasion oh all right hey good that actually went right for a change hey actually use ferocious more. How about that? What a concept. Now, uh, tomorrow, I believe it is, is going to be the final episode of Bingo Boffin. It's good to finally reach the end of that series. And uh, a little sad to reach the end of it, but also good to finish it up to the end of the story. And I've concluded it's very much a character-driven story there. Because it's all about Ingo growing in his adventures and friendships and the like. As opposed to any gripping plot or or grand idea or anything like that. So it's a little bit different than the main area of it, that being able to concentrate on the growing of one character for a year. You, you see what Bingo is at the very start, and then how he changes all the way through. All right, well, actually, getting all these relics is easier than I thought it would be. Good. So with the relics done... Uh, we still need the tallest tower and the southern court. And that would be through here. At least I think through here. And more raiders! You'll find these all over the place. It is annoying that they go running around all like this, like they're hopping children or something. <laughs> the, these corsairs seem to be on a sugar high or something. I mean, since they're usually more into alcohol than sugar, I would have thought that they'd be very much drunk, half drunk. Oh, hello! And you can never predict way or when another one's just gonna pop up out of nowhere for you. Okay, I am going to get my route back up there. I think so. I'm a little, little honey cake. Good. Ah, uh, yeah, that's it. Just wait for him to come to you. That's how you handle it. Good, and take care of him. One at a time, and then... You won't have to worry about... Well, maybe one at a time might be a little bit too slow here. Uh, we want the tallest tower, right? It's hard to see the tallest tower when you're out on the ground, I know. Up close to person, sometimes... Okay, that's the tallest tower, it looks like. The tallest tower at, at Ethelon once kept watch over the sea, and then the southern court, which is down this way. Actually, before I do that... No, I guess not. Uh, I was seeing if I could find that quest I was thinking of before, but nope. Maybe it's one of those oops cases where the memory might be better just to keep intact. So let's go to the southernmost court. Let's take care of this guy so he won't get in my way while I am 
doing my search. And the trouble is when it's off the map is trying to figure out which is the s Oh, I guess the southern court would be to the south, yes. Yes, buildings among the southern court are intact, but empty. Alright, now let's bring the relics back to him, and we shall be done here. And do this a little bit on the grass, so because the road is just full of corsairs. Hey, uh, look at the guy you're fighting. It, 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 it pro tip. And I, I know I, I shouldn't be giving pro tips on fighting. <laughs> I'm the last person to be giving pro tips on fighting. All right, that's done. Let's get back up and see what this elf has to say. And yeah, I see. Okay, packs of three, not packs of four. They're not goblins in packs of four, they're corsairs, packs of three. Right. Yes. Hello there. I've brought these relics to you. It always warms the heart to meet a new friend in these dangerous days. We do not have enough warriors to cast the corsairs into the sea, but your efforts in this refuge have told them that even an abandoned refuge is never truly forgotten by the elves. I am Lothlorn, and I am proud to count myself among the Avarim. It is time for me to introduce myself properly, my friend. I am Lathlorn, and I'm proud to, cons proud to count myself among the Avarim. We were tasked by Xirdan the Shipwright with maintaining a watch on Etheland, and have done so for some time, removing overgrown brush and keeping the paths clear, and ensuring that the docks remain free of debris. If the havens of Mithlon become untenable, this would be the last place from which my people could depart this Middle-earth the, for the Undying Lands. The men of Umbar that occupy Ethelon do us a grievous turn, and do not even know of it. Dorthanet is the leader of the Avrim, and you could find her in the cave where we now reside. If you follow the road southwest on the way to Dol Amroth, you will come to a rocky cleft on the ground to your right. Follow it down the cliffside path over the water, and you will come to the entrance. Tell Dorthlinet of your experience in this land, for she has a wisdom about her, and has proven a capable leader of the Avarim for as long as I have known her. And when you consider that elves live a pretty, pretty, pretty long time, you can imagine that they've known each other for a while. Now, oh yes, we want to go this way. Now, the directions in there are not, in my opinion, greatest. Well, first of all, you have to remember the directions when you get there. But that's another matter. Let me check the map quickly. And yeah, we need to go to the intersection. Is where I'm going to. I'm going to stay on the road until I see the turn point. And there we go to this refuge. And then after that, we get to go to Dole Lamroth, which is. Ooh, there we go. One of the major cities in Gondor, since the Belfalis is a, I guess a principality would be a good term to use for it. And we will head up this way. I think we'll start to see the Lamroth in the distance up there. Yeah, the Swan City, and they are really, really, really into their wings. Maybe a little bit overdone, but then the Gondorians weren't exactly ones for stinting on the decorations, so you could say. And in fact, this is our first Gondorian city. Because, yes, we've run into some ruins, Gondorian ruins here and there. 
and you of course see the ruins of Anubinus. I know not Gondorian, but it was Arnorian, which would be related since it comes from similar traditions. But this is our first true Gondorian city. I know we won't, we don't see it yet, but then after this we will be seeing others because after this we will be seeing Pelagier. And then later on we will of course be seeing Minas Tirith. Yeah, we do see Osgiliath, but let's face it, Osgiliath is in such wretched ruin that not much. Uh, here is the cave on the cliffside and the hideout of the Avarim. The caves of the Avarim, which I wonder if that means the cave dwellers or something like that, or is it the watchers of the dock? I suppose if I could find a Sandaran dictionary somewhere, I can find out. But right now, let's head down this way, down this way, down this way. And this, of course, looks like a place that would be, you know, thought you'd find dwarves in instead of elves, since elves aren't exactly known for... Well, actually, the elves in Merc would also have a bit of a... have caves also, so I was going to say they're not known for living in caves, but there is a precedent for that, since the Merkwood elves also have a bit of a cave system. So, yeah, elves have been known to do it, but they really decorate their caves quite a bit with this with these lighting systems with these light crystals and uh, now I need to find Dornaloth and I think she's up here I hi right, and here's the elf bay standing on the bridge and yeah she's Dressed in black mourning and she's been mourning for quite some time. Hello there. I am called Dorthaneth, and I have chosen to care for the Arborine. Welcome to the Phallus Pine Claw. I am called Dorthaneth, and I have chosen to care for the elves here as a mother does. And they are the Avarine. And they have come to this land to watch over the refuge of Ethelon and keep it safe from danger. You'll notice they make a s sound like that. She did not come with them. And as far as we know, she most likely came from all Florian. Yes. A danger threatens us now. As you have seen, men of Umbar have come ashore in great number. Too many for my few Avarim to drive away. A guest has lately arrived, and we just spoke about these raiders. Go to him, and hear what he has to say, for his news signals trouble for the Avarim, and for the folk of Gondor as well. Do you see him across the way? His name is Galdor, and he has lately arrived from Imlandris. Alright, from Imlandris. Head out over right. Where, where is this visitor from in Landris? First thing you got to do is find. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, here he is. One visitor from in Landris, Galdor. Hello there, Galdor. I know your face, for I came to in Landris some months ago and saw you there. A council was held and many courses decided, but we will not speak of them here. Know that I hold you in esteem and consider you an ally, and will bear friends in common. If is that sense of kinship that drives me to tell you this, do not underestimate the Corsair threat. I gave Dorthanath the same warning. In my journey here, I came near a group of Umbar men, and overheard their talk. They spoke of the reverent tones of the heirs of Castamir and the Scourge. 
but it is not these names that fills me with anxiety, no. The flame of my concern is kindled in the passion in which the Umbar men spoke of their loyalty. Any of them will die in the name of the heirs, and gladly, which is not the trait I have heard associated with the people before now. No, something has changed in them. I will set out to Mithlond in a few days, but do not forget my warning. What are we going to do about this? And what does Dornaleth have to say about it? We will find this out in the next episode of Piney Plays The Beorny.